back everyone um, I just thought I'd do a quick short video on how I actually pull transformers apart out of microwaves um, the fans out of microwaves as well as um, any other sort of device like that has got a fan in it uh, these this one here and this one here was out of the stove that I've just finished pulling apart yesterday these little motors here they're actually out of uh, microwaves they're the ones that sit up underneath they have got copper in them so they have got little brass contacts too I try not to worry about the brass contacts but anyway um, um, getting down to these little transformers too they're on circuit boards now so you get a better value for your copper take your copper off especially if you're doing a wash machine uh, wash machine microwave the circuit boards aren't worth anything to anyone as a circuit board with that on there. The, it's basically classed as scrap, shred. Uh, so your best, if you can, this is what I found out, to actually take your little transformers off, get your copper off because there's not much weight in it. So you just get your copper out. Uh, there may be a couple of these copper um, little, little contacts. I'll pull one apart. Oh, there's already one apart here. And there's copper in that. Once you peel your plastic off, throw that in the bin. Uh, you can pull this little piece off here. Right, and you can put that in your scrap metal pile. It does that up. Then you can just grab this piece. I usually get this apart with... Yes, I know I'm not wearing gloves. I don't want to be wearing gloves with this. I can't use gloves doing this stuff I got that's why I've got so many scars on my hands ah uh, where's my other ply it's gone here this is what I do I just pull this back like so pull it back as far as I can take that off that way put that into that pull the pin out of the center put that in your scrap metal don't get much for it then with a standing knife I slice it down the side Minding the fingers all, all the time. Peel your paper off. Put your paper in the bin, of course. Make sure you don't leave your copper on the paper. If you do leave a little bit, you're not, not losing much. I'll try and get it all. Might not today. Some of them don't have the paper and they just have the... Um, just straight on copper and then what I do the end where the points are that's what you cut off so you get to with your Stanley knife pocket knife whatever and just press down and it should come out like so throw the plastic away copper in here and it should just peel off like gold well I reckon it peels off like gold anyway there's a fair bit on there when you look at it. I'll dig it out when I'm finished. And I'll put it in my hand. It will go as number two, um, it, but everything counts. It's always the end where the pins were. Now, I'll just grab that back out, put it in a little ball for you so you know how much was actually on that. That's a fair bit, really. You wouldn't think that would have went onto that. But anyway, that's what we've got there. That comes out of these. I will be doing... Um, three more of those now when it comes down to these uh, they're also on circuit boards too so all you have to do with those is actually come down I've got a bit of railway line down here upside down give it a flog because I haven't got an anvil anvil would be best but I haven't got it throw your plastic away a pair of pliers just pull it off it's so easy. You get your copper. You get more money for your copper than what you will for your circuit boards. So, and that's what I've been doing anyway. And that's actually the, the scrap metal dealer that I do go to. That's what he also said to me too. And I thought, oh, okay. Because I took me circuit boards over to him and he said, look, you're lucky to get 20 cents for that a kilo. And I thought, oh, bugger me dead. So he gave me a word of advice. He said, look, just do what you're doing, but don't bring me your circuit boards because they're not worth much. 
Um, take all your copper off the circuit boards because wash machine circuit boards are worth nothing. That's what he said to me. So, and that's that. They're so simple. I'll do this other one. You just got to watch the fingers. Ouch, ouch. That's a part. Pull that apart. Doesn't matter if it's got a little bit of solder on it because it's going as number two. I'm slowly getting better with my health too. June is too. Um, we've been to the doctors and we've done results. June's a lot better than what she was. So, yeah. We're on the mend. Hopefully. Do this other half. It's always handy to have a pair of long nose pliers. Try and keep it as clean as possible so when they tip it out, it looks nice and clean. Even though it is going as number two. See this, the transformer there? I'll show you a quick way instead of using a grinder. Um, I will have to... No, I won't have to use the grinder at all on this. No, none of it. No sparks. That's good. Right, that's how quick and simple that is. Right, now with this transformer, that's a simple one. Come down on, say, a good hunk of steel. Line it up with the sharp edge of the iron here. Uh, i seen this on YouTube myself. And I learned a bit. If they've got the weld here, right, on both sides, you can actually shear it off without using the grinder. So there's no sparks involved. Line it up. Get a big four-pound hammer. Just hit it. And it comes off. Wow, look at that. So simple. There's your steel. Where do I put that? In the grinder on the ground. Right, then you put this part in the vise. And we just peel that out. Take the paper off at the same time. Big screwdriver. This is what I do. Take the paper off. If I've got to, I use a knife as well. Slice it down one side to actually open it up, of course. The cleaner it looks, the better. It doesn't matter whether it's still got the glue on. The paper is what they see. That's just the way I try to do things. I know everyone's different and they leave leave a lot of rubbish on there. Uh, these contacts here, I'm just going to take them completely off. The side cutters. It's just rubbish to me. And this big piece here is copper as well, so don't throw it away. Put it with your number two copper. Right, grab the biggest and longest screwdriver you can possible. Go down through here, give it a reef one way, give it a bash down there, and that piece is actually out. No hammering involved at all. That's the easy part. The hard part's yet to come. See the how I cut that open at the top and it's come straight out of the paper? You can get rid of your paper now. That's why I don't mind doing my microwave. That's where you get your most of your copper from. Microwave. Very easy. Alright, get two. Get the other half of the transformer out. In the middle. Some people think that you might get more for leaving it as a full transformer. I don't think so myself. That's just me. But everyone's different. 
I like getting the clockwork, so I need to get better money. And that's what I was told by the fellow I go to. So, he said, the cleaner you got it, the better money I'll give you. I thought, oh, sweet. That's good advice for me. <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought to myself, well, if you're giving away good secrets and you're trying to make a living, well, I'll let you give away the secrets. I just told him it's all a learning curve for me. Like my first, lo uh, second load that I took over, that was a learning curve. I took all the copper over, I took all the alloy over. Um, yeah, got a fair bit out of that one. This could have a good knife, I reckon. New blade, that sort of thing, because it is all glue as well. They're not worried about the glue, because that melts off when they melt it down anyway. Get that through there. Open up the egg. The apple cart. Whatever you like to call it. Right, now hopefully, I should be able to just pry it up with that being in the vice. No hammering involved. If I've got to, I'll hammer this down. Because once I've got it out, I'll be right. Go one each side. stuck in there. It's not playing my way. A few more tweaks. I might just flog it with the hammer anyway. Yeah, noise alert. Noise alert. As you can see, I don't use gloves. I'm not doing this stuff. I'm more hands on. That's the way I've been most of my life. Hands on. That's how I've got Get out and do it. Learn yourself. I hope you can find better things like people that actually do it and learn from them. Well, that's even better still. And that's what I'm trying to do for everyone. Show you um, what, how I do things. It's not the, that's probably not the right way. It's probably not the wrong way. But that is how I do things. All right, do that back up. I'm trying to do things the best to my ability not um, to a professional's ability because I'm not in a business I do this as a hobby that's what it is, it's basically a hobby for me get all that paper off of it, it's just falling off now leave the glue on there that's why I've got a bin handy just put it straight in the bin it looks cleaner. It doesn't look so daggy. Nothing worse than you rock up to the scrap metal dealer and it's all daggy. He looks at me, what the hell are you giving me? You're giving me rubbish, are you? So the cleaner it is, the better it looks. They think, oh yeah, he's trying to clean it up for me. So yeah, that's why I'll, I've got a bit of a um, OCD, you could say. <laughs> it's just one of those things 
Everyone's got an OCD, surely. I know I have. Pretty particular on how I do things. And that's it. That's the best I can do without getting the grinder out and getting that all off. Put that into there. Put that one into there. That's the other one. The, the second one that I've done. Right, this one here, it's the heavier one because it's got a lot more windings in it and it's got a lot more glue in it. This one hasn't. So, yeah. Get a bit more paper off that one. Look at that. Anyway, um, we get stuck into these other ones. This one here, um, what we'll do with that one, I'm going to get rid of all of that out of there first. Hang on. I'm going to put this in there. See, that adds up to weight, yes, but I would prefer it not to go with the weight of the transformer because the transformers, are, you don't get as much because you're paying for scrap metal as well as the copper. So, yeah, well, you're getting paid for that. But if you separate it, you're getting two lots of money. That's the way I look at it. I'd rather get two lots of money than one. All right, with this, I'm not using the grinder. I'm going, going to, first time, trying to do it with a hacksaw. An old hacksaw. Um, these are stacked so that they're like that, and then they've got a flat plate and um, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Uh, they've got a one there that's stacked, and then they've got a flat plate. Uh, one, another one of those stuck underneath but the thing is it's all through the center too so just as easy to get the hacksaw out and start cutting um, just give me a drum I've got that over here haven't I that's rubbish grind is quicker good mix I don't want to create some sparks today. <laughs> there we go, that sounds better. I'm trying to make it so everyone can hear what I'm saying and that sort of thing. See, there's one now. Look, I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's one pallet. Right. There's the second one. And see all this other, I'll just punch it out after. This is the slow way, um, but I don't want to fling all the um, bits and pieces out over all over the ground. There's only a dirt floor. We ain't got concrete here. So I'm going to do it the best I can without making too much of a mess. Here, magnet. You can see all the microwave magnets just stuck up there. To catch most of this stuff, you can have a magnet sitting by. A couple of magnets, one at each side. No way, if anything falls off, goes on your magnet. Go a bit lower. Down there. Down there. Right down there. It's a bit of a trick I learned. You can do it with doing it with the grinder too. It just jumped over there, a little magnet. Didn't fall on the ground. Look at this, I'm going to finish this with the grinder. That's hard work. Bad noise. Turn the power on. an example on what I said by having the magnet there. Now that can be just peeled straight off into your bin, in your scrap metal bin. That makes it so easy. 
Oh, what am I doing putting that in there? That don't go in there, that goes into there. Shocking. Uh, leave that there. So I've got to turn this up. Turn it up. Everyone know that song? Can't turn the wireless on. I usually have a wireless going. We'll be up for copyright. Unfortunately. Not to worry. Uh, that got a punch in here. In the knickknacks. No, I haven't. It's gone. I've put it away. It is right there. And just punch that out. Look at that. Stuck to the magnet again. That into there. Swap our bin around. No, I won't need to. I don't need to swap the bin around. Because what I do here, so I'm going to take that plastic off there. Cut that off. Down to there, down through there, to there, then I get the knife, take the paper off again, OCD, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> still got a lot slight cough, uh, I'm trying to find out if we've got asthma. So, Doc says once I've got rid of the cough, the phlegmy's chest and that sort of thing, go get a blood test to find out if you've got asthma. Apparently, many years ago, I was motor racing. Used to do a lot of motor racing, open wheel motor racing. And uh, yeah, silly me, camped out overnight under the stars and got ammonia. And then they said, oh, you've got... Um, um, asthma. And I thought, well, yeah, how the hell do I get that? So, yeah, so he's going to test me again, see if I've got it. If I have, I have. If I haven't, I haven't. That's even better still, isn't it? Never mind. I took some of the copper with it. Because what I'm about to do here is the quick way of taking this off. Leave that there, leave that there. Side of cutters, the wire stripper cutters, then I just grab these and go straight through the whole lot, whole as bolus. Then I grab a little screwdriver and I just take all the plastic out, like so, then just feed it off. It's because it's still got glue in it, it's still number two, no matter what way you try to put it. I tried to disguise the last lot. He said, no, that's number two, mate. You can't have it as number one. I thought, oh, come on. So I said, I tried to sort it out for you. He says, no, nah. because of the coloration, he knew straight away that um, it was number two. So you can't hide nothing from it. This bloke gets right up close and personal, gets, tries to get to know you and all that sort of thing. Bloke I go to. So, pretty well down to earth. Only problem, was, only problem is, I should say, he's an ex-detective. So, I've got to watch what I do. Oh, what did I drop in there? Can't see in there. That's it there. That goes that way. do drop a couple of bits of plastic in but that doesn't matter try not to get the big pieces in that's all but anyway that is that as you can see I've got my OCD going with the little bits and pieces we'll leave that at that that's those um, so I'll get to and do that as well with them with that with that I'll finish that one off later now these little motors these are the easiest of the lot. Tell you what, they are so easy. When you come down to these little motors at the bottom of the microwaves, what you do here, 
Ooh, this is what I do anyway. Grab a little screwdriver. Get it close. Put your put your ear in, not with, not what it was screwed to. So I strip the whole microwave apart. I don't leave it all together. Just bash it in there. Pull that plate off. Take it out of the vise. The rest of it's all two hands from here on. Get a bigger screwdriver. Pry it out. There it is. All right, put that in your strap there. All your plastic cogs in the bin. Plastic's your worst enemy. All right, grab a pair of long nose pliers, flat nose pliers, doesn't matter what you grab. Take that out, put that in scrap metal. We'll have the pin. Come on out you come. The money's underneath it. The copper. Put that into there. Pull your copper out. Put that into there. Take that off. And grab your side cutters. Just chop away. Straight through. Little screwdriver again. Straight in there. And out comes the copper. All in one little piece. Look at that. Your bin fills up pretty quick when you start doing this stuff. Show you how much I've already got since um, I started getting all the washing machines and bridges and that sort of thing. Um, I'll give you a little run around what I've done so far since my last drop off at the scrap metal deal. Do that at the end of the video for everyone. See that's that. That one's done. So I'll do another one the same as that. I like doing these. They're quick and simple. They're magic. I reckon I'll probably do 300 of these a day on my own, doing this. Doesn't bother me. You know? Keeps me happy, keeps me out of trouble. That's the main thing. I still got to get around and do some mowing around here yet. That's always the way. There's always something to do here. So I offered someone else to do this sort of job. And I said to them I'd pay them. And they said, nah, I'll pass. And I said, well, Look what you missed out on. They go, oh my god. So that was so I could do more work around here. But anyway, they missed out. We got all the money. That was their loss. I was willing to pay them. So their loss, our gain. That's that out of there. That out of there. Come off there, you turd. You little monster. That one there. That there. Right, cut us again. Go through that way. There. There's already popped out. Good. Not going that way, it's going in here. Alright, screwdriver down in through there. They do not take long at all. Look at that, that's the whole lot out. Bang. Done and dusted. Right, now when it comes down to these little fan motors, there's a bit of copper here. And that is number two because it's been moulded there with copper. Um, you can get that out. And you've got, um, what do they call it, cast alloy there, I had to think. Um, so all you've got to do with these, to get the copper out, this is how I do it. Open my vice jaw. I could do it in me on my railway iron down there, but I find it quicker and simpler in here. And just flog that out. That's out. That's out. Simple. Then I get to take the paper off. Right, now with this, this part here, I'll finish this part off first before I show you the rest of that. Put this stem of the motor, you can leave it as a motor and 
send it as a motor, but I don't think you'd get much for that because you've taken the copper out. Um, these ones haven't got the, the bolt hole, so what I do, I just do with the drill bit, and drill it out because you cast alloy. I maximise my profits, and there's a brass bush there too, so you can get that brass bush out, put it with your brass. All right, take that off. You need that because you've got to get the copper. Take this off here. Take your pins out if you can get them out. If not, just leave them in there. They're not going to devaluate you much. Yeah, I'll leave those ones on there. And the easiest way to get that brass bush out, give that a tap because that's got the thread on it. And it's out. But make sure you can get that other stuff out of there. Uh, these things here, multi grips. Give that a turn. I think it's brass. I'll check it with my magnets. Put it in device. Put it in device, mate. There we go. Now, if that sticks, it's not. It's brass. Look at that gonna fall off so she's definitely brass I'll give it a scratch and we'll find out the scratch test is always the best yeah she's brass all right you can get the metal ones and the aluminium ones in these so that's the thing to look out for just a little thing that I've I find myself yeah Maximizing your profits is what I, this is all about and proper recycling. Now if you can recycle it better because uh, that would get mixed with your cast alloy and that sort of thing you, you know that'll add up. That's all you have to do with that. Do the same with this one. It goes everywhere here. Pick those two up they fell out. And that just made it a little bit better pricing. For moi. For moi. I've got nothing for those. That just goes in the, into there. I haven't got a bin for those yet, so I'll put them up the back. My brass is up there. Got a um, stove up there. I've got to strip it too. I'm not doing that today. Right, get rid of that stuff. And we get back to doing this. How I go about doing these is I get to with a good pair of decent side cutters, not uh, your wire cutters. They're too broad on the nose. If you can get a decent pair of these, go to your, your hardware store um, and buy a decent pair. Don't go cheap on them. Pay for what you pay, pay for what you buy now these days. So what I do is I go close as I possibly can there. Right, probably can't see on camera over here. Mind if my hands in the road. As close as I can with that weld. Right, like so. I use them all the way through. That's got both strands, so now I can just pull that through the hole. Straighten this one out, of course. Pull that out, and there's your copper. There's one side, and you've got another side there, so that you just do repeat the same same thing. It's quite simple. I've got two pair of these. Found both of them. Both in a set of, in a bin. So I'm lucky I didn't have to buy them. But that's just me. I find everything in the bin, I suppose. In the dumpster. I think a lot of people do. Thoroughly enjoyed it too. Always enjoying it. I might get that one. Oh, 
We'll see how we go. There's a broke a bit. Even though it broke off, put it with your pile. Don't waste none of it. It adds up. It's like all your copper dust. Don't let it go to waste. Here we go. We're making some progress. There we go. This is what you call really micro scrapping. Getting the value for what you want. That's what I reckon it is anyway. Micro scrapping. Getting the best you can. Instead of leaving it to the scrap metal dealer. Yeah. Maximise your profit. Don't line his pockets. It's your pocket you're trying to line. No one else's. Alright, that's scrap metal over there. And that's our copper. So you imagine leaving that, you know, leaving that on that motor. And then you putting that into scrap metal. Putting it into shred. Uh, metal shred. Anyway, we'll do another one, I suppose. This one's partly already done. The pin's already out. Um, one before I do. We better finish this one off. Getting ahead of myself. Peel the paper off and move these out of the road. We're just about done here today. Only got those three to do. I won't do this one on camera today. I'll get, get to and do that after. Um, they take a little bit longer. See the discoloration of the two different coppers. Right, that's got a coating on it. Uh, if you're not sure whether it's got an aluminium whether it's aluminium or wire, just grab a knife. Give it a scrape. And if it comes up nice and shiny underneath, it means it's got a coating on it. It's a glue coating. So that's what I was told. This one here, you can definitely tell it's copper because it's nice and shiny. They call that as bright. Not quite, It's not quite bright, but yeah. Right. Uh, I'll just use the cutters on that again. Where have I put them? Up there. I used to just cut that off right there and then stand there and peel it off. But I found cutting it this way makes life so much easier. Having a good pair of these because you're cutting through a fair bit too. Uh, uh. Trying to take big stabs at it. And you'll finally get through it. I'm putting all my weight on that too. That's that. Little screwdriver's gone walkabout. There it is. And just put it in your bin. It's a fair bit when you get it off. And I'll take that out and I'll show you how much we got for just this little bit. Oh, there's another piece. So right up there. Like I said, I don't worry about the uh, brass contacts. Um, more because that's a lot of work. A lot of work I do enough as it is now. Do you want to save it and all? I had to, uh, yes, say, here's an incident for you, a little story. Went to Harvey Norman, seen a washing machine. So, oh sweet, I've got a wash machine. So I don't mind getting the motors out of the wash machine. I brought the wash machine back here and uh, plugged it in, put water to it, put power to it. And then a couple of hours later, they ring me up. Oh, did you take a wash machine that was down there? I, and they described it to the T. I said, yeah, well what the hell was it doing down there? They asked me to bring it back. So I had to take a working washing machine back. Ain't that a bummer? Fully working. Nothing wrong. So, but anyway. My loss. Never mind. I could have made 180 bucks, 200 dollars on that one. Because <laughs> it was working. But when I got back there, he explained that it was leaking out the back. And I didn't find no leaks. Not unless it was out of the hot water one. But see here, we don't use hot water. Um, for doing any washing because we ain't got a hot water system that'll do do for washing machines so we just plug a cold tap in for any 
front loader washing machine that we do pick up they usually got a heating element in them anyway so if it's working we you know all we do is we pull it apart pull the drum apart press wash it get all the soap out because if you put too much soap suds in your washing machine there's a car cast alloy spider in the back and the same as what it is with the top loaders you know um, what actually happens is your soap powder doesn't matter whether it's a liquid doesn't matter where it's a powder it will eat that away well that's got screws in oh well, we don't put that one. so yeah I do advise because I do pull a lot of them apart and I find out how Look, you've only got to, when you do pull one apart, grab a hammer, once you've got the drum out, and you can see the spider in the back, it's, it's a, just a, like if you're doing it with a, um, a front loader wash machine, all you got to do is, once you've got the, 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 the flywheel off the back, and you've got it split apart, um, all you have to do is basically hit it with a hammer, once you've got it all split, hit it hit the spider on the back um, and you'll see all your, your soap powder just fall out and it's still wet so that's why it's so corrosive ah screws over there so yeah just something I've learnt by doing all the wash machines this one hasn't got any brass in it it's got metal ones in it so we'll leave that as it is yeah that's got metal in that one over there, I might check it out actually. Check it out. Magnet. Yep. Yeah, see. 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 So he's definitely that way I better actually what I'll do is I'll grab that back I shouldn't have threw that this way where'd you go hello there you are. oh no that's the metal one this one's the cast alloy take that out of there put that with our cast alloy oh damn better get some pliers or something there we go do 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 Yeah, put that out, put that over there. That over there. In our bin. Alright. Put our magnet back. That up there. Oh, I can actually get rid of that. Because those two there have to be drilled out. So we have that one there. It's broke. Come on. Get that out of the road. When they put these together, they're melting it on there, so it melts with the the metal as well. Copper's hotter than the metal. Let's got that out. Now it's separating. It's not what I want it to do, but it's doing it. That one over there. Come on, it's not going the way it should. There we go. Sometimes it is a bit of a struggle.
get into this one. Let's put the brass. Once you get into a rhythm, you won't. If you don't flog it too much, that comes out quite simple. You're doing it this way too, you're not getting any copper dust. You're just prying it apart. You don't have to worry about sweeping any up. I see a lot of people on on the good old YouTube sweeping their copper dust. <laughs> I sort of think, well, okay. Why are you doing that? Why'd you do it with the grinder? You could have done it a bit better, but it's not always how everyone does things, you know. Everyone does things their own way. I'm all trying to show everyone how we do everyone does it, so that's what I'm doing here. How I do things. I'm trying to find the easiest way. Nothing's ever easy though. You do it to the best way as your own ability. How you taught yourself. There's no one showed me how to do this. I got in and learnt myself. Um, but I'm willing to share. Sharing is caring. I care on what goes on. So I'm willing to share what I do. And how I go about it. That's why I do my cans. To show everyone how much is actually going in the landfill and how much I wreak the reward out of getting it out of the land, out of the dumpster too. I, I don't like going through other people's rubbish but I'm not going to get it anywhere else. There's too many here where we are residing um, in this suburb that do a lot of it. That's why I, I go out of town away from here to get ours um, and people are astounded on how much I actually get. I've been notified that I might be able to get another place um, for next year. So that'll boost the Me profits up. Right. Get into this one. Fill that out. Get that off there. Yeah, 
a council bloke that where I go, he give me a bit of a heads up on um, about another town 30, 30 odd k's out from where I collect already. So, get another bit of a drive further out of town. Good on ya. Well, I wanted ya. Right, that over there, that there. Grab this one. Grab that out of there. Get out of there, you two. You probably won't. There's one. Leave the other one in there. It's not gonna hurt me. Look out. This is the last one, yes. Last one of these anyway. <laughs> the magnets work. Can't say they don't. Got another one on the other side. up to there, turn this over, same process. This afternoon I've got to also get to and do a few extra things, I'll unload the trailer. So hopefully I can get around and do some mowing. Anyone want to come and mow our lawn? All of them had to get an air conditioned cab. Not that you need air conditioning at the moment here. Just got to watch out for trees and sprinklers. Very time consuming job. Doing what I do. This takes up a lot of the time though. Scrapping out. There we go. See how it's actually moulded a bit into the material there, um, into the steel. And that's what I'm saying about the copper is hotter. It's hotter than actual normal steel when they're moulding it in. So they're basically welding it with copper to copper. Be crying shame leaving these on there. 
these bits of copper would be. That's a fair bit. Right there and there, do this part now, and we'll peel that off with it. Crunch. Didn't break nothing. Right, sit that one there. This is the easy part. That's a fair bit. So I don't mind doing these little pieces. You get a fair bit off them. I'll get the side because I cut that. Little strands. That's them. This one. Doesn't matter where you put your screwdriver down. As long as you can peel it off. Look at that. Look at that. Nice bunch of copper. So it goes on to that. Come in there. All right. Get down and do these three little quickies. What we do with these? We just break them up. Get along those pliers. Just break it up. Plastic goes everywhere. I clean the plastic up after. That's what I usually do. But if I can avoid it, it's even better still. This one is easy. He's already done. He's up. They're done. Wow. Easy peasy. Alright. Knife. Right down that side, because that's where the, the joiner is. Straight off there, then just peel it off. And it takes a second or so. Look at that. Do away with plastic. They can be quick if you want to really get to and do them. Got a whole heap of these over there. I just thought I'd put a couple on the bench here, show you how I do it. Um, yeah, that's what I eat. Get them done. Get a few done anyway. This one's got paper on it. Knife again, straight off. You can leave the paper there and and actually peel it out of the paper. I'll show you. Show everyone. It leaves the paper behind and all that sort of thing too. If you hang on to it. You can just grab the paper. Bit bare long nose, of course. It's so small. We can get them going blind here. Got my glasses on too. And you can just peel it out of the paper, the plastic paper. Now what I'll do now, make my life easy. Just slice it. You get every skerrick. I think I went the wrong way with that one. Should have went off this end. They wind them on a funny way sometimes. And now that's just breaking off. 
I did go the wrong way with it. Come on. Got a little bit left. Now I'll just push him off with the knife. Next one, just get the crusher down the side, down here, look at that, don't worry about the contacts, I'd have to collect too many of those contacts to um, make it worthwhile for me so yeah I do throw a fair bit away I know I shouldn't but I do everyone's not perfect Oops, broke the plastic off. Oh, just pull it apart. Get the plastic out of the cedar. Grab it. Okay, the other side. Done. Right, that is that. I'll do that one later. So what we got on home front, right, I've got a fridge I've got to strip out, um, I'll just get a cord, get the cord off that, get the motor out of that, um, it's got some electrics up the back there, um, not sure what's inside. Got a bit of tin there but I'm not going to worry about it. That may, may not, twin cooled, yeah, it may have some aluminium in behind that. Um, it may have another one there. Usually they're not copper, in <coughs> excuse me, uh, they're not copper usually inside the, in these. All the copper's behind now in the, geez, that stinks. I'm going to leave that open. Poof, been closed up for too long. Um, all the copper's down below there. It's never in here anymore. They make them out of steel. Um, I did strip out this this stove. That's how I leave them. I don't worry about pulling all this insulation out. It makes me, does make me hands itchy because I don't wear gloves on these either. As you can see, hands get dirty. Hands on. Now with the microwaves, that's how I leave the shell. Um, I use the backhoe and I put them out the back out here and I just have fun. I lift the hoe up and 
bang, squash them down, compact them. Um, won't be doing that with that though. Now, what we've got over here, um, I'll show you what we've got over and what we've done today. I've got me ordinary ferrous metals here. Now, this is what I'm talking about with the spider in the washing machine. See how that's all corroded? I just hit that and that fell apart. That's out of a front loader washing machine. So it had some hairline fractures already. That's because this part here sits up against your washing machine and the powder gets in behind, dirt gets in behind, and it just eats it away. So that's your spider in your washing machine in a front loader. Uh, with the uh, normal top loaders, they're a round disc, cast, uh, uh, not ca yeah, cast alloy disc. I don't think I've got one yet. Um, and they actually get dirty too, up underneath, and yeah, they just each this powder, powder is so corrosive. Um, we've got our number two copper wire there coated. I've started sorting a lot of stuff out. I've got little transformers here that I got money for before. This is what I was just doing then. All these little things. Um, I've got motors in there. Uh, extruded alloy. Uh, this is where I'm putting all my copper. Um, I'll grab a torch. Oh, grab my phone. I've got copper piping there. Grab a torch. Grab my phone. That's the easiest way. <laughs> Haven't actually got a torch. Now this is what we got done today. Pull that out of there. That's got to go in our wire section. Our coating wire. This is number two coating. Do, 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 do. But that's what we've got there today. That's a fair bit. No. The transformers is what adds it up. So what I'll do with that now, that that is like that, is I will put that over in this one here. And that's what we've got already. I hope you can see that. So that's basically with all the shave shave all the shavings as well. Um, this goes over here. Um, so that's basically I'm gonna try and fill this bin up as much as I possibly can. Uh, probably won't take me that long at all. Uh, stainless steel right here, turn turn that off. That's all out of the dishwashers, the bottom parts, and the inside of the door. Because you can see how I've just got two with the grinder and cut, cut the bottom off. Test it with a magnet. It's the only way. Stainless steel. It's not magnetic. Just cut it off. Get better money. Um, so that's what I'm starting to do. Yeah, yeah you, your non-ferrous, I should say your ferrous stuff, your magnetic stuff, I'll put it that way. I'll put it the way I can understand it and probably everyone else can understand it. That... I'm only getting $150 a ton for magnetic stuff. Ferrous metals, they call it. Um, and most of the stuff that I've got is actually junk, junk. Like, it's got a lot of plastic on these drawers and that sort of thing. Wash machine shelves and that sort of thing. They, it's just junk to them, so they don't bother weighing it. You, you give them an estimation and tell you a little bit more. <laughs> That's where I'm going. And yeah, they give you a little bit for it, but you know, you're carting all your good stuff over. So just say how much you, you estimated, but um, yeah. Um, like I was saying with the fridges, I'm not taking them over there. I'm going to dispose of them here. Um, I probably won't get any money for them, but the thing is, I would rather do that than get no money in by taking, I'm spending money to, in fuel wise, to take it over and uh, I wouldn't have got anything out of it anyway because I'm contaminating everything that I put in it, in, in the fridges. So I would rather leave them empty, pile them up here if I get so many, say six or seven of them, I'll, I'll, I've found a place here that I can actually take them and I don't have to pay for them to be dropped off, which is a good thing. Um, it beats paying so, f like traveling 200 k's and getting nothing for them. So, that's why I'm looking at it. Um, I take all the copper out, like I was saying. But anyway, that's the home front. I've got another fridge over there I've got to bring over here yet. Uh, I've got to 
take that off there, strip it out. Um, all of that, all of this stuff. Now that I've done that, I pour that over in this drum, the John Deere drum. I'm yet to put a couple of holes in it and put a couple of pieces of wire across so we can lift it off. Lift it on and off. That goes into there. Finish with that, finish with that. So yeah, if you like this video, that's the start of our um, cans. Haven't got anything in here. What do I put in there? Nothing. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. I'll just show you where this this goes. I've got the stove to do yet too, bugger. Anyway, yeah. Everything that what Rome wasn't built in a day. Oh, yeah, that was extruded. This is normal aluminium and that's cast aluminium. I have got one of those. And this is what I'm talking about. See how this is a top loader wash machine. See how it's all corroded there? It corrodes the bolts off even. Locks them up. And this is the undercarriage. It's all corrosive. It eats into the steel bolts, because they've got steel bolts in there. Um, basically every second hole and you can never get the bloody things out so you've got to cut them out but anyway that's dirty cast alloy goes in there um, so yeah hope I see you in the next video everyone oh before I go this is our pressing part I'll show you a quick quick update on this um, I'll do a little press up I've got some in there got a little bit in there Swap that into there for all the new viewers. Um, put that down there. That up on its side because we're already so far down. I usually wear a pair of gloves, but I've already pressed this down a couple of times. This is the the jig I made for the shop press. Press all of our aluminium cans that we cannot straighten. All the aluminium foil trays, aluminium foil, um, also um, wine bottle tops. The aluminium of those. So we just press this down like this. It's only a normal shop press. I got this from Super Cheap. Um, you can get it from your Home Depot, that sort of thing. They don't cost that much. This is a um, 12,000 kilo, 12 tonner. You just press it down. This part here, I think I, that cost me just to boil the material for all of that. I think it cost me roughly $70. It's paid for itself in the first scrap run. And that's the thing, if you can make it pay for itself in the first run, why not? It's only a bit of man labour. I have thought about getting a porter power one so it goes up and down itself so I can just press a button, but that's more cost. You know, it only takes 20 minutes to press a 20 minutes to half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that to do a full block. We're almost up to a full block on this. All right, that'll do that. I'll do the rest. I've got to do I'll probably press some up on Monday. Not on camera though. And that just presses it down. So simple. See this this shop press came with this one and this one. I just had to make that with this plate. That was a square plate. That's a 10 mil plate, and I have already bent it. So I probably would have been better off going a 15 mil plate. That's a lot of pressure on that though. When you're thinking 12,000 kilos, a fairly good press, but I can push that back with that anyway. Anyway, that's that, it's all pressed down, nice and flat. That's up about oh, halfway. So probably another two weeks, I'll have a full block. Six, six kilos or five kilos, so yeah. That's just a bit of an update on the press. Um, we're putting all of our wire that we're going to strip in here 
Uh, we'll get our wire stripper here. Um, yes, I've gone a bit over what I was doing here. Um, just got to clean the table off and get to and put the drill on. Away we go. Uh, we are trying to save aluminium wire because actually it's got an aluminium coating over copper wire. So that's what I'm putting it as. Aluminium coated copper wire. I think that's what they do it as too. Um, because I rang, rang him up and said, look, do you just take this stuff? And they actually said yes. The last lot I threw away. Shame on me. But anyway, like I was saying earlier, I'll see you in the next video, everyone.